Hi and thanks again for joining me on another episode of Sealed for Good and today I'm talking about why a technical data sheet or sometimes known as a product data sheet is so important and not just for the applicator but for many of the stakeholders involved in waterproofing projects. So firstly a technical data sheet it is the primary source of information for the product and it, everything about the product that is referred to in terms of how it can be used, how it should be used and the function of the product is in that data sheet. And it is essential that data sheets are read before the application, not during and not after, before. And many people I know that have used even products of ours for so long have referred to data sheets afterwards and go, well, I didn't know your product could do this or it had that property. And just, you can't assume, I'm sure many of you come across so many products across your um, days at work over the course of a year and there's little intricate things that you need to understand. Don't try and put them all in one basket and think they all do the same. That's, that's an important piece and it gives you the ability to go back and ask questions from the manufacturer or the supplier about the product because as I said, often it's like the little bible that we refer to on technical data sheets. So what information can be found on technical data sheet and what does it mean? So there's some more critical information that's always inside a data sheet first and things like suitable applications. So it should give you a summary of virtually what the product is first. What is it for? What does it do? And it gives you some indication of where it sits in, the, in, in its ability to carry out an application. And often people get the wrong product because they don't read the, right, they don't read the data sheet and they get the wrong information from assuming they know that. And sometimes even a product label like on a bucket it's limited in terms of how much information can be on that pail or if you're like me and you need your glasses on and you can't read the fine print you can't see it all so a data sheet does give you that and these days with many of your, your smartphones and websites you can pull this all up on your phone but things like different membrane properties for different applications are you doing an application for under tiles can it be used for immersed areas can it be used for exposed you know there are some membranes for example that you can use under tiles that also have UV exposure and others that have good vapour transmission properties and more breathable membranes and they're, they're the things that you select for the right job, right product for the right job. The other thing is with the data sheet, it's the performance parameters. So understanding what those properties are and these are the ones that are important, I'm going to come to this at the moment, uh, at the end, but things like the membrane class, okay, high elongation, low elongation, what is tensile strengths like, the water absorption levels, the, the water vapour transmission properties which are important, VOC levels. Many of your clients want to know this, particularly builders, because that's becoming more important on building sites with the health issues that come about. And often projects will have a situation where they'll call for a potential alternative or a proprietary product that could be an alternative to, a, to an item. And if you don't know what's on that data sheet, you might suggest that I've got a product that's uh, an alternative, but it might not stack up to what's been specified or what the client wanted to use. So know your stuff, know the data sheet and compare it even between the different um, products that you are looking at and it's all found in here, not in, a, not in an ad and not on a pail, in the data sheet. In addition to that, the other critical information that a data sheet will have, it will talk about the product features and benefits and things like, is it, is it suitable for potable water? Is it a non-slip product if it's going to be used for external? Does it have antifungal? Is it anti-carbonation properties if it's going to be used externally? The colour because often that comes up with clients. And those product features and benefits are information that, again, are not always on labels. So don't assume that you might have uh, used the product once and you know exactly what it is and you pull the lid off and it's a different product because changes can happen and often manufacturers will update their data sheets with a dated data sheet, a date on the data sheet, and that's the most up-to-date information that you, you're meant to use. The other part that a data sheet will have is the associated components and these are really important things like primers, surface preparation um, methods, detailing products, bond breakers. Collect collectively they make up the warranted system and so understanding that and just because you've used a product that might be similar in nature and you use a different bond breaker or you've used a different primer before and think I can use the same method that could, that could be where you come unstuck. So these are the things you follow through the first sign of a cowboy on site is he gets one bucket of a primer and doesn't match up to the product he's using and just assumes it'll be okay and slaps it on. And you might get away with that. You might. But when you come unstuck, there is no protection from anybody, neither the manufacturer or your supplier or any authority. 
So these are things that you want to find on the data sheet and get that piece right. So, you know, there's often we see customers, they go and buy buckets or buy our membranes, go to site and then realise that um, they need other ancillary products to go with it and they haven't purchased it because they didn't read before they started. So again, saves you time and hassle and gets it right. This next one on the data sheet is, it, I would say it comes up probably once a day and it's about coverage. I say it again, coverage. The most important part, particularly of a liquid membrane and primers, are the coverage uh, per square meters based on the liters. Now, some of our European friends are in the market have their products stated in kilograms. That serves nobody any use in this country because no one takes a scale on site and works out how much one kilo would do to square meters. We work on liters. So you need to understand in the data sheet there should be a conversion if that bucket says 15 kilo, it might only be 10 or 11 litres. What the conversion is of that kilo per litre and then work out how many square metres you're supposed to get from a litre. Because this is the part where if you don't get that right, you won't get the film build and you don't form a membrane. I mean, I can have a fantastic product. This is our Grips F38 FC, our P39. Phenomenal waterproof membranes, but if I put the P39, P39 at paper thin, not following the instructions in here, it's not going to form a membrane film and that's the part that any applicator needs to understand and your client. These are sorts of things that will make you a different, different applicator on site. Actually sharing this with your client when you go on site. This is the product I'm using guys. If you want any information here it is in the safety data sheet. Transparent and nothing's held back and they can follow what you're doing and see exactly that you've got nothing to hide. And this is, it's, it's all there. It, it tells you what it is. I mean if you're meant to use one and a half litres per square metre a 15 litre pail should give you 10 square metres. You shouldn't be getting 10 square metres from, from um, 5 litres. It just the, the issue is we've got to understand how data sheets work and why they are there. And they are there to ensure that a, that a product is used correctly and is successful. Surface preparation, that's the other thing that's important on data sheets. And I would say that every reputable brand that I've seen out there will have a section on surface preparation on their data sheet. And that's the part that often goes into more detail than what you'll see on the label of a pail because we'll talk about different types of substrates and different types of uh, surface conditions and understanding that. And so, you know, what you can use for cleaning methods, what you need to use for priming, what you might need to wait for drying uh, times, etc. And getting that part right is so important before you actually lay the membrane down because you can put the membrane down perfectly with your coverage but if you haven't got the surface preparation right, it'll come unstuck. And we've spoken about this in previous episodes, but it still comes up all the time. And then there's also the piece on the compatibility with other finishes, or other surfaces that might come up again. So firstly, if you're using a membrane that's going to be tiled over, it'll indicate what sort of tile adhesives that you can use on top. If it's a product that you can use under vinyl, or under solvent finishes, like uh, particularly some timber flooring adhesives, it'll advise that. It'll also give you the, the indication of what surfaces it can be bonded to. So just because a membrane can be bonded, so there's something like a membrane in our, in our uh, range, we've got primers can go over metal surfaces or plastic, there might be some membranes you don't recommend over plastic or metal, and so it will cover that. So these are the, these are the things that, it's, re, it's all about preparation. None of you should be using any product, whether it's ours or a competitor's product out in the marketplace, without referring to the data sheet. And if there's anything that you don't understand, there should always be a contact number on the rear, Typically with our grips of data sheets, those of you on our good customers out there are always following that. You'll see the description, the feature and benefits, the applications, the uses that you can use it in, the surfaces that you can bond it to, surface prep, priming details, how we detail with bond breakers, the application and coverage, and we go into that in, in, in a lot of length and details and coats, how you install our bond breaker joint band, you competitors out there, you can close your ears now and giving away secrets, tiling and surface toppings, Storage conditions, okay, this is the other important one. You might use a product, it could be a specialty line, and you buy it, and you might not need it for another three months. How you store it to ensure that the way you use it next time, it's still in good working order. Packaging, you know, if, you've, if it says here we've got 15 litre pails, and you've, you've got a grip set product, that's a 20, 20 or 25 litre pail, someone's actually done some dodgy stuff there, and they've put our label on something else. So it should stack up to what you've got. Precautions, all the notes, Clean up, which is important as well for on site to ensure you don't create any issues for your client and environmental. And then there's all the technical data that you need to um, refer back to, and that's the stuff you can give to your client. Special notes, 
and our 1800 number for you to phone if you need to get hold of us on our website and email address. Any questions on technical data sheets, throw them back our way or join in the next episode of Silver for Good.